everyone, my name is Sajra. Today we are reading Thomas and Friends, The Cranky Day. So let's get started. Cranky Bucks Thomas and Percy enjoyed working in the docks. They liked the sea air and the sound of the girls. But one day, the friends were feeling hot and bothered. A crane was causing trouble. His name was Cranky. And this was his first day at the docks. You're useless little box, he called from above. If you put these fat cards on the inside lines, then I wouldn't have so far to travel. Rubbish! said Thomas. No crane has ever complained before. Well, I'm complaining now. And Cranky banged his load down on the quayside. Later, the two engines met Gordon and James and told them about Cranky. Cranes are airy fairy things. They need a lot of attention, like me. In fact, said Gordon, you should see the situation from Cranky's point of view. He's high up in the air, coping with wind, rain, and baking sun. Then he looks down and sees you two little engines being annoying no wonder he calls you bugs. When Cranky heard that the big engines agreed with him, he grew bossier still. Come on, come on, push those fat cars closer to me. But Percy was too upset to concentrate and push the fat cars too far. Poor Percy. Then Cranky played a trick on Thomas. Push your fat cars onto the outside line. It's easier for me to load up. So Thomas did. But Cranky left the loads beside the fat cars not in them. You must have known my arm can't reach you there. Complain Cranky. This mix-up caused confusion and delay. Sir Tufam Head was most upset. Thomas and Percy, this new crane has an important job to do. I have heard that you have not been helping him today. You will go to your sheds and consider how you will improve yourself tomorrow. Now Thomas and Percy were upset too. That evening, a big storm raged across the island. Cranky and the angels were trapped at the docks. We are sure to be safe in this shed, said Doc. But he was wrong. The engines had no idea that they were about to be put in great danger by an old tram steamer. It was out of control and running around straight into the sheds. Ah! Help! Call the engines from inside the shed. I can't! Called Cranky. When the storm was over, Satufam had rushed to the scenes of destruction. Thomas and Percy will help you. He called to Cranky and then you can help the engines. Oh, please hurry! cried Cranky. And tell them I'm sorry I was rude to them. 
So it was you, my bad, said the fam hat. I owe those engines an apology. Thomas and Percy soon came to the rescue. And it wasn't too long before Cranky was upright again and clearing the racket. At last, all the engines were free. Oh, thank you, said Gordon. What would I have done without you? Well, I had to be rescued before I could help you. But I never thought it would be by a couple of bugs. Cranky was about to say bugs, but he quickly corrected himself. Er, small engines. Thank you. I'll never be rude again. However, you two mites are in my way. So move over. Pah! Said Percy. He's back to bugging us. Don't move. You're still attached to Cranky. But it was too late. Cranky still looks down on the two little engines, but ever since that stormy night, he never calls them bugs or mites because he knows they may bite back. Put the on, Percy! Percy buffed grumpily into the yard. He was feeling put upon and said so. I feel put upon, he complained to Thomas. Thomas was confused. Put upon what? The rails? No. Put upon with work. Driver says he is too. Put upon? What a silly thing, replied Thomas. But Annie and Clarabel like it. And they sang about it too. Percy's be put upon, put upon, put upon. Percy's be put upon, poor old Percy. Percy's being put upon. I am, I am, I am. He collected metal from the foundry, coal from the yard, flour from the mills, rock from the quarries and fuel from the depot. Then he delivered it all to the dogs. Next he collected some empty freight cars. Who's this sturdy little engine? cried the freight cars. We want Thomas or Doug. Percy ignored them. Put upon, put upon, that's what I am. That night, all the engines laughed at him. We can see what's been put upon you, said Thomas. Silence, said Sir Tufan Hat. Percy, you've done a good day's work. Now get a good night's rest. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Next morning, he took some fat cars to the coal yards. Then he had to push empty fat cars to the mine shaft. When he arrived, there was trouble. The foreman spoke to his driver. The fat cars are stuck on the mechanism. All they need is a good push. We'll do it right away. Percy shunted back to where a large canvas barrier was used to protect his line from loose rocks. Percy charged at the line of fat cars too fast and too hard. Oh no! gasped Percy. The fat cars broke free but ran out of control to the mines below. Oh no! Faster, faster! The silly fat cars yelled. Then there was trouble again. Get out of here fast! The mine's collapsing! We'll just have to make a run for it, Percy, called his driver. 
There's going to be an avalanche, wailed Percy. And he was right. Worse still, the track he was on began to crumble. Oh, help, wailed Percy. Then he remembered something he had seen earlier. There's a canvas barrier by the track that might save us. They were just in time. Percy was right. The canvas did indeed save them, but the miners didn't know that. The avalanche has buried an engine and its crew, shouted the foreman. We must help them. When Percy had been rescued, Sertufem had spoke to his driver and fireman then to Percy. Driver told me how brave you were, Percy. As a reward, you will be repented at the words. Oh, thank you, sir. When he returned, Percy's coat glistened in the sun. I'm sorry we teased you, Percy, said Thomas. You were certainly put upon by that avalanche. Yes, indeed. But just look at my new coat of paint. Now I don't mind that being put upon me. Lady Hat's birthday party. One summer's day, Thomas and Percy were idling in the station when Bertie the bus arrived. Have you noticed something? said Bertie. What sort of something? asked Thomas. Sort of an hat, he seems, well, different, replied Bertie. I did see him staring at the clouds this morning, said Percy. I wonder why. The reason was simple. It was Lady Hat's birthday and Sir Tufan had a new outfit. It's perfect for my birthday party, said his wife. You look splendid, Tufan dear. And I'll wear my finest hat just for you, he replied. Your birthday is a great occasion. It is, so don't be late. Don't worry, my dear. I shall be spick and span and right on time. Later that day, Sertufan had had changed into his new suit. You look fine, sir, said the station master. You'd best be going. Indeed, agreed, Sertufan had. The engines are busy. I'll take the car. Is it reliable? Asked the station master. Certainly, said Sir Tufan Hat. But it wasn't as he sped along. He suddenly saw a large hole in the road. He braked hard, but it was too late. Butter! Now I've got a puncture. If I change my wheel, I'm sure to dirty my suit. And that would never do. Just then, he heard Caroline. I had to attend my wife's birthday party and I cannot be late. Please give me a lift. I'll try, sir. But Caroline did it like going fast. I'm hot. My angel will overheat. And it did. Told you so said Caroline sadly. Bother, bother. Then he heard a loud whistle. It was George the stream roller. George was cross when he saw Caroline. Call yourself a car. You're a disgrace to the road. Find yourself a scrap yacht. Caroline spluttered in fury. George's driver was more polite. Can I be of assistance, sir? Only if you can get me to my wife's birthday party, said Sir Tufan Hat. We can take you to Thomas, replied the driver. 
He's just down the line. Much obliged. And they rumbled away. What about me? Wailed Caroline. I'll send for help. Called Seth Van Hat. Stay there. That's all I can do. George was enjoying rolling along the lane. But not Seth Van Hat. Oh, it splashed everywhere. Worse was to follow. <laughs> cried George. Something snapped. He veered out of control and Sir Van Head landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Potter, Potter. Thomas had never seen such from head in such a mess. Can I help you, sir? Asked Thomas' driver. Yes, please. Get me to the station as fast as you can. I'm afraid our fireman's been taken ill. Then I'll be your fireman, sighed Sir Tfam Hat. Thomas was excited. Seth Fan had had to work hard. Cool dust and smut flew everywhere. At last, they reached the station. Seth Fan had looked at the clock. <gasps> Just in time! He gasped. He heard Lee pick up a huge bunch of flowers. Good luck! called Thomas. Sir Fem Hatch's wife was waiting for him as the clock struck three. This stood Sir Fem Hatch tired but drunk band. He gave his wife the flowers. Well, thank you, my dear. I know this was my special birthday party. But I didn't know it was fancy dress. <laughs> Everyone laughed. And then the party began. The end.